um, I'm very honored to, uh, to give you a, a presentation or a workshop because we are going to be interactive about the Global Changemaker program that Ubiquity and uh, ISAC International have started. Uh, for those of you who weren't present yesterday, my name is Willem Overbos. I am a 47-year-old uh, uh, father of four kids in the age between eight and uh, 16. So due to the whole COVID uh, virus, we have a lot of kids at home. So uh, beforehand, I might apologize for noise if it happens. I don't think so, but let's be cautious. Um, I've got a background in um, entrepreneurship. I studied business economics at the University of Maastricht, where Isaac was also uh, very present. Um, I was not a member from Isaac. Uh, I have to be very honest. I uh, joined a student fraternity and had a lot of experience there. But Isaac was a close relationship, um, so I know have known Isaac for a long time. Um, I uh, was a business entrepreneur for more than 17 years before I joined uh, Ubiquity, and that was in the summer of. Oh, sorry, this is very stupid. I turned everything off. I will go into flight mode so that this won't happen again. Um, I joined Ubiquity in the summer of uh, 2019, basically in the role of business. And why is this happening? I turned it off in the flight mode. My telephone is in flight mode, everybody. I'm very sorry. Um, I joined Ubiquity as a business development director, uh, basically working on the global program for Ubiquity. Um, let's uh, start with the uh, presentation. And if you have questions in the meanwhile, please feel free to chat. Um, I say that beforehand, and um, I hope that Peter can help me with the uh, questions in the uh, presenter admin so that I can uh, concentrate on the global change maker development program and the workshop. Okay. Um, just to get started, everybody, uh, the world is in a hyper complex uh, world. We all know that we are living in a situation where we have to work from home. And the poll um, shows us that the majority of people is able to work from home. And we all have to deal with the challenges that we're facing. We have to be flexible. We have to learn how to work digitally. We have to learn how to operate in uh, webinars like these, although they have been around for many, many years. My first webinars were actually in 2008, 2009, working with the, uh, the Google Meet platform, or Hangouts, as it was then called. So webinars have been there for a long time. And I think that having this hyper-complex world and having this pandemic that we currently have, it's an opportunity as well. And yes, we have to be very uh, thoughtful of the uh, the people that are sick and the people that don't have uh, good health care, because there's also a lot of people that don't have that. But that's, uh, that's something that I'm addressing now. But I will be very positive during this workshop, because I'm focusing on the digitalization of the world. And I'm focusing on the opportunities that arise from uh, this crisis. So, we have a complex world and the 150 odd people that are currently in the webinar will all have to deal, so you all have to deal with these changes. And that's what I wanna do this workshop about. How do you deal with these changes? And if we look at the global gap in skills, that is something that impacts employers around the world. And I've had a business with uh, employing over 40 people for a long time. So I've seen this and in larger corporations, it's the same. There's a huge gap between what people learn in, in college or in university and what they can actually do. So having a lack of soft skills, having a lack of soft skills, where I will be explaining it more, is leading to um, productivity loss, higher employee turnover, lower morale in your staff, lower quality of work, the inability to grow business. And as a business entrepreneur, you don't want that to happen. You want to have... I don't know why this is happening, guys. I turned everything off, but this is very annoying. I don't know where I can stop that. Um, 
so this is really um, what you don't want to have as a business entrepreneur. You don't want people to well, basically not be motivated. You don't want that. You want them to be involved. You want them to be emotionally binding to your organization, wherever you work. And um, you want them to be very committed. Now, what I really would like to know is um, in what kind of business are you? Because we've got 150 people here and we have a poll set up that I'd like Peter to run just to learn a bit more of uh, you as an audience. So where, in what kind of business do you work? So Peter, could you please uh, add that poll so that we can, uh, can see what happens there? Because it, uh, it will basically give us a bit more uh, idea of what's happening. Um, so in what industry are you in? Government, corporate, are you working for an NGO or a nonprofit? Or are you working in a an SME company? And I'm looking at the poll going live. Thank you, Peter. Um, and then we'll see whether you recognize that having staff in your organization will give you challenges and that you always want the best, of course. But what I like about this is that a lot of people are in corporates and a lot of people are in SMEs. Um, actually, if you look at the global numbers, that's an interesting figure always. 96% of all global companies, that's over 500 million companies, is an SME. And an SME is every company that has that less than 250 people on staff. So uh, there's a large number of small organizations. And when you're working in a corporate environment, as I did myself, I started my career in ExxonMobil, um, so in the oil business. If you work in, in a corporate environment, you think that everybody works in a corporate environment. But most of the businesses, most of the enterprises in the world are small, medium enterprises. And even in average, they have less than 10 people on their staff. So imagine the importance of having people, staff, colleagues that are really equipped for change because basically the world around us is going to change and if we look at it the majority is in in SMEs and that's something that I would have expected now if we look at the impact of having that gap between uh, hard skills like uh, computing doing uh, marketing so all the things that you can actually learn in university or learn from courses the hard skills um, having lack of soft skills and communication um, in an average organization gives you a 53 uh, K dollar cost managers in the US say that it's a 30 360 billion um, issue having less collaboration skills so working together is very important and it really affects your business. That's why I'm putting these number up because it's so important to have people that work for you that are not only experts, but are also people that really know how to collaborate. So having these issues is something that you need to address and yet you have to know as an organization um, what type of skills people have. So if you can address that problem if you can work together in your organization and see whether um, there's something that you can do about it whether you can know what the level of soft skill is in your organization and are they equipped for change because basically that's what we're looking at it's very valuable to know that in organizational levels so if you look at the global market for soft skills training and i think that someone else has his mic on as well if you look at the global market for soft skills, it's really progressing. So someone has his mic on. I don't know who that is. Um, hopefully he or she can turn the mic off, but I'll just continue. Uh, so global potential of soft skills is massive. It's a growing market and mainly in Asia. So if you look at Google Trends, which is one of those very handy uh, websites that you can lose for, you look for analytics you can see that basically in the asian region a lot of searches are on the queries what are soft skills and if you look at the other side you can see that the market says okay the demand for soft skills so there's a huge demand for soft skills in the uh, in the us and in europe 
and there's a huge supply or they're getting ready for supply in the Asian markets. That's a global trend. So uh, Ubiquity basically as an organization is globally uh, working on that specific trend. So we have been specializing for the eight, past eight years in training people in soft skills and mainly focusing on um, the um, Oh, sorry, this is this was a different communication. So mainly focused on the global sustainable development goals. That's our main uh, focus in terms of learning content. And we are developing and we have developed this unique software tool that basically assesses your soft skills and assesses the UNESCO 21st century skills. So in the rest of the presentation and the workshop, I will be um, doing a run through of these two things. So we're going to talk about soft skills, and those are the seven soft skills that we have in our programs. And we're going to talk about the UNESCO change maker skills. And I will try to be uh, as interactive as we can during this webinar. So we're asking you to do a little test here and there and do a little poll here and there uh, to keep you uh, to know what we're doing. So making a living, making a change. Isn't that what we all want? Isn't that what we as organizations should be focusing on? And Ubiquity is a B Corp, which means it's a benefit corporation. And we have um, signed up for the manifesto of B Corp, which is basically doing business for good. That means that we're actively aware of our environment, that we actively try to contribute to the sustainable development goals, that we look after our staff, um, and that we are really looking at the environment. And it also means that we're aware, that we are grateful for being you know, on this world, that we're grateful uh, of being surrounded by people that uh, can contribute. And we've built our business around those elements and it's three elements and i'm going to talk you through it today first of all it's about you it's about how you how well you are equipped for change how well are you equipped to handle those seven characteristics of or basically personality traits that we can actually influence because there's some traits that you get by birth they're in your dna but some traits personality traits that you can really well, work on you can learn to become a better collaborator you can work on to become more and more a leader you can work on improving your communication skills so those things once you are aware of them you can improve them so that starts with equip you know what skills do you have and how can you improve them and the second thing is if you want to go and be a change maker then of course you need to engage you need to engage with the world around you you need to engage with companies, with the government, with your local communities, with your local football club, with your local um, um, initiatives that support the environment. So engaging in the world and with the world around you is very important. And luckily, we have the World Wide Web, we have internet. So Ubiquity also initiated um, a platform for growth and a platform to basically reach out and engage with the world around you. We call it the Ubiverse. And at the foundation of our organization lays the Ubiquity University. It's the place where we develop courses, courses that are really focused on developing your personal skills, developing uh, the soft skills that we value so much, and basically focus on um, well, the emotional side that you uh, have in you, focus on being a good person. Um, so that's the UB skills uh, from the Ubiquity University. A little bit more maybe uh, about Ubiquity University, because our founder and president uh, was there yesterday for the launch of the partnership international. Um, Ubiquity University was uh, launched in 2012. It uh, started as the Wisdom School, an initiative that really uh, looked forward with a visionary approach that if you want to change the world, you need to change and address education. And you have primary education, of course, I got kids in primary and secondary school, but also people that you know go to university and afterwards, something that never stops. You can always educate yourself, you can always learn, and you can always improve. 
So that's um, what Ubiquity University started to do, starting 2012, developing programs that help people uh, improve their soft skills, that make them more aware of their impact on, uh, on the people and the world around them. Um, let me go to the next slide. And if there's any questions so far, just please raise your hand and I hope that Peter will uh, help me and uh, tell me about it. So if you're building a platform, then it is very important uh, these days to use AI. So the little robot you see up there is the AI bot that we're developing to actually help you develop your skills because it's something that you can do over time. Uh, but it starts with filling out you know, the basic uh, details about who you are, what you, uh, what you actually can do and uh, what you know. Um, we have the Ubiverse, it's the global network, and we have the knowledge base. Now, first of all, let's try and see um, the whole soft skill part, because soft skills are basically your superpowers. They are with you all the time, and it's something that you can really develop. So that's, that's the good news. You can really develop your soft skills. Now, I'd like to take a moment uh, to know if you have any idea about soft skills? Who is already working on soft skills? And I'm looking at the uh, chat now, so just raise your hand, give me an idea who is already in their organization or self working with uh, soft skills. So I can see a lot of people raising their hand. And still someone has the microphone on. Also, somebody asked about, uh, somebody said they created a profile yesterday and they, they could not find a specific program you mentioned. If you can maybe touch on that. Yes, the, uh, the change maker scan. I will be uh, addressing that uh, later on in the presentation, Peter. So thank you for that uh, question. Um, I think it's maybe Alberto who still has his microphone on. No. Uh, so if you can ask him um to turn that down so the global potential in the uh in the training market if we look at soft skills thank you all for raising your hand so that's something that a lot of people are working on and that makes sense because 90 percent 94 percent it gives you a chance if you can really use your soft skills you get you get better jobs you get promoted your job success will increase and of course, US employers believe that soft skills are important or more important than hard skills. If you look at the larger corporations, the tech companies, of course, if you look at Microsoft and Apple and uh, Google, you know, they're all claiming, CEOs are already claiming that they stop hiring people from the, 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 the well-known uh, universities and that they are looking for people who actually have experience in life who have suffered a bit, who have learned it the hard way. So not only know it from the books, but also know it from life experience. And that's basically what soft skills are all about. It's the skills that you learn through life, and it's the skills that you can actually uh, use to improve your career. So mind you, it will be developing over the, the next years, as we saw in the training market, which is also always a very good indicator of, of growth. In times like these, for example, if we look at the top left, to collaborate, very important. How can you collaborate? How can you make something like this, this big conference online? How can you make that happen? Are you a good communicator? Are you really listening to the people around you? And are you able to give feedback? Creative. Are you creative? Are you willing to try new things? How flexible are you? Or are you setting your weights? Can you critically think about things and design things? Are you a bit tech savvy? And if you're not, it doesn't matter. But please, please try uh, because technology does never hurt. You can't break it. It's something that only is there for you to try and to use at your benefit. But it is going to be more and more important. And SME uh, employers, as larger corporations, as governments, every sector will be looking more and more in their in your tech savvy way and i don't know isaac is also an organization that spends a lot of time in developing these skills are you globally oriented and of course customer oriented i've, I've always find it a bit you know unfortunate that it's only 25 percent in importance but then again you know this is for a lot of entrepreneurs very important and 
you can be a bit disruptive. I always like to be a bit disruptive in my business. Uh, but then again, I'll show you later why that is, because that's one of the things that I like doing. Um, so research shows that CEOs desire the following things most. So if you're able to build global communities, they really want to have you. If you show leadership, of course, they want to have you. Um, but the more to the left they go, the more, well, basically, more the more soft it seems to be coming. But I've learned the hard way that if you're not mindful, if you're not uh, a team builder, if you can't have your entrepreneurial skills, well, people, let me tell you from experience, those are the things that really keep you standing in times of change. If you're mindful, if you're able to basically sit back and look at the world around you, sit back and don't get confused by all the chaos around you, relax a bit. If you're able to lower stress levels, because a lot of people have stress. Burnout is one of the major sicknesses, at least in Europe and the rest of the world. And other research shows that almost 75% of people are not happy in their jobs. Well, people, please get out there. Get out there and do a different job. Get out there and make sure that you equip yourself for change. Get out there and do something about that. Because if you're in a job you don't like, please, please, just, I won't say resign. That would be a bad advice at the moment. But please start looking for a different job and start finding the ones that you really want to do, where you, where you can have some purpose, where you can do what you like doing most. And look at your hobbies and find your, find your way, because it's very important to do what you love. And again, 75% of the people are not doing that, and that's a lot. So if we look at the soft skills, we have this very beautiful... <coughs> oh, something's happening again. And these are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and we actually envisioned the seven soft skills around it. So meeting global challenges, are you able to work in teams and collaborate? Have you got enough social innovation power? And are you a bit of an entrepreneur, which is always good. And you don't have to be an entrepreneur, but if, as long as you're entrepreneurial, trying new things. Are you emotional intelligent and aware of it that you are it? Are you basically trying to be a problem solver? Can you come up with solutions? Are you showing leadership? and? as you saw in the graph before this, are you able to build global communities? And that is something that is very challenging, of course, because building global communities really means that you have to be able to look beyond your own culture. And Peter Kovacs yesterday did a very beautiful presentation about culture and looking beyond it. So it's, it's a good one to look back to. We have basically set up a partnership with the United Nations SDG Learn platform you can find that in unsdglearn.org and let me just type that in the because uh, that's a nice site to, for you to look at www.unsdglearn.org um, it's the united nations site where all the information globally about education for uh, the global goals is listed so you got over 50 60 partners and that is UN bodies, that is research uh, bodies, that is universities, basically giving all their education on uh, the global goals in one place. Uh, and I've put it in the chat. Uh, it's really something to look at if you are if you want to do more with uh, the SDGs, which I'm uh, thinking probably everybody knows, or do you want me to explain a bit about the SDGs? Please raise hands if you need more explanation about SDGs. We need assessment about the, yeah. Okay, I'll briefly say that uh, the SDGs have been around for five years now already. Uh, in 2015 in Paris, we had the, uh, the climate uh, conference and the large climate agreement, uh, basically establishing the, uh, the global goals for sustainable development. 192 countries signed uh, this agreement uh, with the ambition to uh, basically have uh, the 17 goals that they have defined um, sorted in 15 years. And sorted, that's a bit, that's the wrong word. Basically, they ask us to be more 
uh, aware of the world around us. But instead of giving this high level goal, uh, they try to make it a bit more uh, measurable. And that's why they define 17 areas of importance. And these 17 areas, and I see this link coming up uh, from Anui, thank you, um, have, a lot in, have a lot of purpose. So actually uh, goal number eight is the goal which has uh, everything about e the economy. Uh, and that's one I re always really like because basically social innovation and entrepreneurship are linked to SDG 8. So that's why personally I think that's a beautiful goal. Um, and I'm convinced that if everybody is a bit more entrepreneurial, the world becomes a better place. But it also is the same for education. Education and no more poverty are really uh, in the top five of the UN goals. And um, well, basically, they had gender equality, uh, education for all, um, a teacher in every classroom that basically gives, also gives some sustainability uh, and makes makes kids aware about the world around them. So that's one of the ambitions about UN SDG Learn, a teacher in every classroom that knows about the sustainable development goals and is able to tell that in class. So that, I think that's a beautiful ambition. If you look at the 8 billion people around us and a couple of billion kids in the world, uh, if, that's, if you can give that um, in a classroom, it's amazing. And I think that everybody should to try to contribute it at your local school with your kids. Um, make people aware around you that, that we're all doing this for the next generation. And you can always contribute. You can always help. So please do so. Well, let's continue. And thank you for raising your hands. Let's continue with the um, with these soft skills. Um, building teams uh, and working together, basically around those seven soft skills, uh, we came up with the idea to uh, to make that into personas. So you have the thinker, the mindful, the leader, the innovator, the empath, the collaborator, and the builder. So what I'll do in the next couple of slides, and they will be shared to you afterwards, I'll just have a quick walkthrough uh, of these different personas, and we're going to do a little a little test after that, uh, because you know, we agreed that it's going to be um, an interactive uh, workshop. So if you're the persona of the, uh, the thinker, and again, uh, on the left, you can see that 93% of USA employers believe that critical thinking is very important. Uh, you're uh, inquisitive, you're take, uh, you, you take nothing at face value, you're well informed, you are confident in your own reasoning, you're open-minded and creative, you're fair, you're open to change, you're decisive, honest, and you've got a voice for reason. If you look at the second one, the mindful, you're more focused, you're present, balanced, productive, resilient, and resilience in times like these is of course very important as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, very important. You work well with other people, you're patient. Stress does not take control of you, and that's important, as I just said. You're in control of your ego and the world, and you care about the world around you. Well, there's the leader. 80% of employers, of course, want the leader with the super skills. You have got this vision, you inspire others. You show people what's possible. You breathe, you breathe believe, you motivate, you listen. You bring people together and bring out the best in others. You make tough decisions and you get the job done. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of CEOs and leaders currently out there that need to get a job done. So let's let's be well. Let's think about them for a moment because there's a lot of people in a lot of businesses that are affected with the current COVID-19. So um, I've got people in my own environment that. Uh, that lose that job that, that had, my brother has a restaurant he had to shut down his restaurant and I'm I'm certain that a lot of you have people around you that uh, suffer so the leaders need to do the job but they need the innovators the confident the fearless the out-of-the-box thinkers the ones the executive the positive ones the curious ones the ones with passion the hard workers and the ones with inspiration then the empath He's very self-aware. He is sensitive to others' feelings. He's curious. He has a strong intuition. He has a strong physical awareness. And he's opening people up. He makes you feel safe. He makes you feel believe in yourself. And he's passionate about what you do. He's a well adapter. And everyone around you succeeds. He wants that. 
Then we've got the collaborator, and he gives you a free. Uh, he gives freely of your. You, he gives freely of yourself, your knowledge, your talents. He plays the team before self. He's patient, flexible. He's a good listener. He understands and asks the right question. He's respectful and appreciative. A very important uh, uh, thing, skill to do, have to have. He trusts and be, is trusted. He's disciplined. He make he makes others around himself better, and you are the secret source. He is the secret source. Now, finally, the builder. He holds the ground vision. He sees all the moving parts. He embraces diversity. He sees the opportunity around him, always. He works well with others, sees the big picture, is approachable, trustworthy, a great communicator, and he deeply cares about the world. Well, that was the profile that uh, fits fit, fitted me. So that's uh, the one that I like very well. Um, but I'm very curious in um, what you uh, are actually on the profile. So we're going to take, and it's only a less than three minute test. Uh, Peter, can you please put up the test and uh, direct everybody to the, uh, the quiz? So we're going to take three minutes to do this quiz and then see uh, what uh, happens. So far for this really informative presentation, while people feel the answer, uh, one question that came up is, what is the link between emotion and skill theory? What is the link between emotion and? Skill theory. I have no clue, to be very honest. Skill theory. Maybe uh, we can have a bit more information about the one who asked that question. Yes, so that was Balsam who asked the question, if you can maybe clarify. From my side, what uh, my, from my experience is, is that when you want to do something like develop a skill, if you have an emotional investment, you'll be much more motivated and much more effective. So that's one link that I personally know about, but it's possible that Balsam had something else in mind. So I'm gonna look to see if she can provide some more details. And then yeah, that I will would be great. That to you. And then if, so skill theory is uh, um, an, uh, a term that I'm not aware of. Um, so that's why I like a bit more background on her uh, question. And then again, from my own experience, being uh, self-aware and emotionally aware is uh, something that you learn when there's a crisis. I think that a lot of people uh, just you know do their thing uh, can be great leaders, can be great people, can be great collaborators, but then if the crisis really hits you, and that can be on a personal level, but on a business level as well, then you're really challenged. And the big question is, uh, are you open at that moment to really invest in yourself, listen to yourself and stay healthy mentally and physically? Um, and that's something that I think is, is very important to, uh, uh, to take notice of. So I see that a lot of people are doing the uh, the test. So we're just going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to have a sip of water. Let me go back. Uh, and Peter, if you can just pull up the uh, the next poll as well, uh, so we can uh, see what the uh, the answers will become. Uh, once they've finished. Very well. And uh, the good thing I see in, in the chat box, a lot of people are inspired by what you're, what you're saying and, uh, and also uh, you're really thinking in terms of solutions and what are ways that uh, as, as a community we can do together. So it's very nice to see how motivated and inspired this whole community is. As yeah, as I think case. that... Uh, for the poll, uh, could you remind me which poll is the one the that you would like? The poll that says, uh, has the, se the, the seven options, which we are only able to do five of. <laughs> okay, Maybe I see. Uh, I thought that because it was not uh, the full seven, we would uh, not do that. We but can uh, still add, add it. it. Um, and then maybe, can, can people do two polls at the same time? Mm, yeah, 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 so I'll add them separately. OK, 
Okay, just uh, raise your hand once you've taken the poll so that we can see uh, if we're making progress there. Yeah, I can see a lot of hands being raised. And did you like the poll? You can also comment if you liked the poll and if you were surprised by the outcome. Lydia was not surprised by the outcome. Okay, Lydia, sorry. Most people seem to be like it. Well, there you go. Um, please fill in the poll. And then we can see what the uh, the ISEC community is all about. And for uh, Alberto and Maytag, you know, this might be some valuable information to see what you have got in uh, in your organization. A lot of leaders. Bam, and the builders go well. So what I've done is I've shared the, the seventh question poll that I split in two. Yeah. So uh, it seems to be working. My on, on, on yeah. two sides is not quite perfect, no, but at but least I think we get an idea yeah. of uh, where people what, where yeah. people lean toward um, you know their yeah. personal self assessment. Wow, many many builders in Isaac. I'd like some comments on that from uh, Marielle and Alberto. If you look at the uh, the attendees currently, that's really great to see. yeah well we'll let it run for a bit um wow the builder let me just go back to the builder profile you hold the vision you see all the moving parts you embrace diversity you see opportunity around you you work well with others you see the big picture approachable trustworthy a great communicator and deeply care about the world well that's a good thing for isaac and it's a very good thing i think that if we look at the change maker program that we're running um, it is very hopeful and positive that a lot of you will probably like the program uh, and be able to develop more skills and give and basically create more impact in the world so that's very cool to see thank you so much for sharing your uh, results and William, um, there's a question here yeah. that i think might be worth answering fernando Araujo asks who's the best Wh which is the best of the category there is no best and there is no order. So it's a good question. Um, I think it, it, the whole poll is about self insight to know where you are and what are your strong powers. And if you know what your strengths are, the, the, the skills and the way to put those skills in, um, in your work, in your environment, and to basically be aware of it and develop them further. So if you know where you are and if you can follow the directions, if you know that in my case, you're a builder. Um, I can I can tell you I've been sitting on the on the leader the leader former as a business owner I was the CEO of the company, uh, and as a CEO you have a lot of tasks that you have to do and responsibilities that you have to take that are not always um, in line with who you really are as a person. So being a builder, I'd rather be out there and build things instead of sitting um, in the company and manage the things in my case. So uh, for, for me, it was very good to know uh, and learn more about myself and where I'm best positioned. Then, uh, and that's how I use it, Fernando. Uh, and that's actually how the little quiz is uh, meant, uh, just to give you an idea where you are and see whether you want to develop those skills that you have. So we've been talking about the first step in the uh, in the UB pass, your unique skills. Um, you're already directed to the uh, the global program. More about that and the Ubiquiti University, who actually teaches the skills. Um, I'd like to talk. Uh, I give you a bit more information because that was one of the questions, Peter, that you raised earlier on. Can you tell a bit more about the uh, the the Ubiverse itself? Um, we've created a um, ISEC alumni uh, program video, which I will try and uh, shall I run it? 
or are you going to start it, uh, Peter? I will set that I, up. I, yeah, I'm, I'm prefer you do it. Yes, so I will start it. So for everybody who's listening, uh, depending on your device and your connection, it might ask you to unmute or press play. But for most people, it should play automatically and you should hear it. So just in case one of these uh, situations come up, just pay attention and you can just uh, I, play. I, play I, I mute now, reason. right? I mute during the video. Uh, yes. Are you crazy enough to think you can Are you crazy enough to think you can change the world? Well, if you are, it's time for you to join the movement and become a part of the Ubiverse. A community of conscious change makers committed to co-creating a world that works for everyone. Co-creating a world that works for everyone. The Ubiverse is a place to connect, share, learn, and grow. A place to be... Are you crazy enough to think you can change the world? To join your cause, expanding your reach and impact. So, do you have what it takes to change the world? We think you do. Join us today and shine your light on the Ubiverse. Do you have what it takes to change the world? We think you do. Join us today and shine your light on the YouTube. Peter, can you... Uh... I hope that Peter can stop the video now. And then we'll go back to the... Uh presentation yes so we'll bring back the the presentation we might need to move ahead to the slides where you were uh, yeah. previously uh yeah 26 okay good yeah great that works so dago says if you want to change the world you need to invest in uh, in people if we want to change the world we gotta yeah, and you gotta invest in yourself as well and we gotta make leaders aware that that Conscious people are the people that you want to hire. People with experience and that are emotionally balanced are the people to hire. So thank you, Dago, for your uh, question and hope that answers it. Um, so more about the, oh, somehow the, yes. Um, I was talking earlier on, not only about soft skills, but also about the UNESCO skills for change. And they're very much alike with the uh, the soft skills, but they're framed a bit differently. So UNESCO, the United Nations organization that um, is part of the uh, the global goals um, set up, let's call it like that, has identified eight individual skills, soft skills as well, that you need to make an impact in the world. And the question of this workshop was, are you equipped for change? Um, and that means that you not only need to be self-aware and have the, self, the soft skills that we d identified earlier, but also uh, link them to the impact skills with collaboration, critical thinking, self-awareness, integral problem-solving, systems thinking, anticipation, strategy, and intercultural communication. So as you can see, they're very much alike with the, uh, the soft skills overall, a bit different in terminology, but then again, if we look deeper into that, that's what the program of the change maker development is all about. Um, so in the uh, program, there's the link here in the middle of the, uh, of the screen. Uh, it was just in the video, which brings you to the Ubiverse. And together with Isaac alumni, we've created a group. So on the Ubiverse, there is over 50, 60 organizations that um, are joining in to basically work on this uh, global ambition to uh, educate for good, because that's what we're doing. We're trying to bring people together that are in, in all sorts of roles in society and that are uh, wanting to learn, wanting to contribute to the world and are basically looking for a positive change. 
um, so the Changemaker program that we run together with Isaac is aimed for that. It's aimed for basically equipping yourself and making a better world. Um, yesterday, already a lot of you Isaac colleagues of your colleagues joined. So it's free for you uh, as an Isaac alumni to join the program uh, and uh, the platform. And basically, you can communicate with each other and start uh giving posts and giving information so uh, i'd be happy to uh, share my screen after this um, maybe i can do that uh, peter can i share my screen live Tom, peter next to the mic and video options you, you should yeah. share sharing options yeah and yeah. Uh, the share your screen is one of them yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay it looks like the person is already shared would you like it? yes Okay, uh, Chrome, top lot, and then up. Okay, so now you can see my screen, I think. Yes. Yes, okay, great. So this is the uh, Isaac alumni group. And I'll just run you through it uh, very briefly. Here on the top right, you can see your uh, profile after you've signed up. In your profile, uh, you can see more information about well, yourself, you tell a little story about yourself, you give your skills, uh, you can see where, which events you're attending, what organization you are uh, listing, you can see the posts that you have and the groups that you've joined. Um, so it takes a little little bit of your time to uh, to go through the, to the sign up, a little bit about yourself, a picture, maybe even a video and your, uh, your social um uh links like facebook and linkedin uh and i've chosen to do uh, twitter and linkedin um so back to the group uh the isec group has a couple of features and i'll briefly walk you through it you can actually look at the posts of your colleagues so they'll be able to post based on your interest you will see recommended posts um, and the interests are basically set up here on your profile again, so that you don't have to see everything, but we've got a couple of education, innovation, philosophy, psychology, sustainability, entrepreneurship, integral theory, politics, and spirit and soul. So they are grouped basically around uh, the, uh, the educational topics that we're running and related to soft skills and uh, United Nations development goals. Um, if you click this link, you will be directed to the, uh, the change maker scan that I'll demonstrate live. Uh, you can write a post, uh, very easy. If you want to share information, it's here for you to, uh, to do that. You can even enter videos, uh, run a little poll among your colleagues, um, add it to this specific group or post it in the, in the overall UBiverse. Um, we can create subgroups for you, regional groups. Uh, you can see events and the library, which gives you access to over 15 uh, Ubiquiti University, um, we call that courses uh, and trainings that are on discount for you. So that's part of the program. Uh, there's a 15% 15 dis 15 discount on all courses and this weekend, so until this, this evening, even 100%. So as an ISEC alumni, Please check out the courses and um, look for organizations and people uh, in your network. Um, here you can see MyTech, former uh, ISEC, Tanisha, former ISEC. And then you can see that a lot of people are joining uh, since yesterday. So that's all there for you to use. Um, while I'm sharing my screen, and that's basically the next slide um, on the uh, on the presentation as well, you can take the um, Changemaker program. Um, and that's the Changemaker scan. It's right here. Are you equipped for change? And this gives you the, the, the scan, which is about six, sorry, six different, sorry, eight different, um, I'm going straight to the outcome, the eight different uh impact skills that united nations unesco has defined so systems thinking anticipation conscious engagement strategy collaboration critical thinking self-awareness 
integrated problem solving and system thinking. So this is my score. I'm not doing this uh, whole test today live because it is uh, roughly uh, 75 questions that you have to go through. Um, it's not that difficult, but it takes a bit more time. So I'll, I'll just show you why I'm not doing that because um, it is eight steps and it has all these individual scores that you have to go through. That would take too much time uh, out of our uh, workshop, but you do that to get the outcome. And of course, you want to get this badge. Uh, you want to get the change maker badge that Isaac and uh, Ubiquity are providing for you. And we're working on the ability to share that on, on LinkedIn and in other platforms as well. Um, so it gives you a basic idea of what you scored. And then, of course, we are a training organization. It also gives you ideas about how to improve your uh, skills. And it links through to the uh, different courses that we provide and courses of other organizations as well to basically improve your skills. Now, the good thing is that the skills that you have defined here, you can add them to your overall skills. And then you can go and look to the matches. And um, I'd like to show you that uh, live. Um, once I've done my skills and I've added other skills as well, I get this UbiPass profile, which is very interesting for you to have because it, it basically flips the way that we normally look at degrees to a more skill based profile so we're all accustomed to having a, uh, a certificate or a, a diploma of a university or another school and then you know the school says you're good at it we flipped the model at ubiquity we're using a uh, different framework which basically builds up all your skills and then says okay the skills that you have would you, you uh, and your work experience would qualify you for 70 percent as a marketing specialist and if I go into more detail there, I can see that out of the essential skills, I already have those two, but I need to do more uh, specifically, I have to develop this program. So we have a very deep understanding of knowing what kind of skills you have to develop to grow uh, as an individual and get, get certified for it. So flipping the model is one thing and linking the model to the United Nations Development System, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is another one. So we're linking industries, education, and skills together, and basically help you guide your way to your uh, next steps in terms of uh, contribution, purpose, and a, a purpose-driven way of living your life. Um, hopefully, I go back to the uh, presentation now. I'm nearly yes. Uh, I just wanted to uh, bring out a couple of questions of the users who were trying to log in. Could you show them that there is like a chat box for IT support? It seems like some of them are having trouble to basically sign up. So they, they want to see the, like some people is trying only only have the option to reset, uh, reset password. So they want to see how to sign up. Yeah, I can go back to the little bubble that is for IT support. Yes, one second, one second. Uh, Chrome, and then uh, that's good feedback. So if you're running in the test, you have this little bubble here that uh, gives direct access. If you're back in the dashboard, then uh, and in the uh, alumni group, there's always this. You just start typing here, and uh, me and my colleagues will help you out. If that was your question? We'll be on that chat box. Yeah. Mention that you're an alumni and that you are part of the change makers and they will be really happy to help you. More than probably who I can yeah. help you with the IT support. But regarding the purpose yeah. of the partnership, I'm welcome to answer all the questions and, and we will try to move forward with this. Yeah, I can see that now that Patricia makers. is asking the problem is to log in. We do not have a passport. Uh, that's correct. You, pl you please register on the Ubiverse. Um, there is no technical integration between the membership uh, uh, passwords of the ISEC alumni uh, platform and Ubiverse yet. Um, so you just sign up on the Ubiverse. You will be directed if you start your journey on the uh, program page. And Peter, in the meanwhile, could you please 
put the uh, presentation back on so that I can go there. Um, and I can see that Dorian has registered. So you sign up on the Ubiverse. If you if you do that through the link that was supplied uh, by Peter, so start with, um, yeah, you can do that. But you can also start at the ISAC uh, programs page. Follow that link. You'll be directed straight away to the ISAC alumni group. Register there and it'll happen. Uh, so that's the change maker scan. And that's the, the program where you basically see how you are equipped for change. So take some time and run through the, um, the UB pass and the scan uh, itself. And uh, I'm very curious how you will be uh, doing that. And that basically brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, again, referring to the uh, change maker program that we're running with uh, Isaac. Um, and well, I'm here if you have more questions, uh, I can hang on. Um, Peter, but this kind of uh, concludes the workshop about you know, becoming a change maker and seeing how well equipped you are. So to uh, to give a little resume, we've checked the soft skills. We've done a, a soft skill uh, test and you've, you've seen in which uh, box you fit it. We know now that the majority of the ISECR is a builder, at least of the 180 people present here. So that's good to know. Um, we've looked at the uh, change maker program and the Ubiverse, and that uh, really concludes the uh, the workshop that I had uh, today. So, um, Peter, maybe there are some questions, and otherwise, back to you, Mario. Presentation, Willa. Uh, we're going to go back to also kick out the alumni talks by Peter. So I just wanted to mention that this partnership just start is just the beginning. We're going to look into more integrations and also all the regions and national alumni associations are going to get benefit into know more about the part of this change maker scan. They're going to have like an admin console to track the results and a couple of other things that we're working on. There will be a webinar for national alumni associations and regional alumni associations to know more about the partnership. Meanwhile, yeah. Let's get connected and be change makers. Take advantage today. All the courses are for free, and in the future, you also will get a discount. But take advantage. Why not one course today? Just put that goal on your on your mind that today.